Fundamentally, genomics is critical to combating emerging threats. All infectious microbes uh, have genomes, and those genomes are the basis for the development of diagnostics, of vaccines, of therapies. And so the better we understand the genome, the better we can combat these deadly viruses. Viruses evolve quickly. So because they evolve and change quickly, what you can do is sequence a virus to find out its genome, both over the course of an outbreak, so at different periods of time, but also in different places geographically. When we first became aware of the growing threat of the Zika outbreak, we didn't know all of the mechanisms of transmission, how it spread between people. We didn't know how it caused disease and whether, in fact, it was causing some of the clinical manifestations that it was associated with. But as the outbreak wore on, there remained kind of a paucity of, of Zika genetic information. And we heard and started to appreciate just how challenging it was to sequence the virus from clinical samples. Zika was an incredibly challenging uh, virus to study. And it's really because it's a very low concentration in your, in your blood and in your different clinical samples, and so it's really hard to, to detect it, and it doesn't stay around for a long time. So we had to really come at it from many angles to try to figure out how to decipher its genome. And so what you ended up seeing from a phylogenetic analysis of these genomes is that genomes from Brazil occur deep on a tree, uh, which suggests that much of uh, the early spreading uh, throughout the Americas originated in Brazil. Uh, and ended up spreading to other countries in South America as well as Central America and the U.S. Most of the genomes that we ended up sequencing uh, clustered into four different groupings for different regions and we look at an estimate of the dates at which the virus is introduced into these different regions. We noticed that it was uh, introduced many months before it was first detected. As genomic sequencing and, and genome surveillance come online, this is the kind of thing that it could be useful for in detecting outbreaks at a much earlier stage. And the approaches uh, that we describe in our study to sequence a virus will be useful to be able to generate more genomes of Zika in order to keep an eye on how the virus is evolving release all of the data publicly. And so that means that we know the data are available for the collective ingenuity of the wider scientific and medical research communities. And there's so many aspects of understanding and controlling infectious diseases and outbreaks that understanding the genetics can help inform. My lab has now worked on Lassa, on Ebola, on mumps, on Zika, and what's exciting is just to see how we're moving forward at each step. These are incredibly challenging emerging threats, but we're learning at every step how to do the technology better, the sequencing better, but then also to collaborate with others better. Many of our collaborators were working in Zika-affected countries. They were able to contribute insights and expertise that we really couldn't get being based at the road. We were really lucky to work with a great network of partners. It's a remarkable example of how the scientific community can come together and mobilize when there's an important job to be done.